Dupont trees are called Dupont because they were first used in the uh, US company of that name, sort of 80 or 90 years ago. And what they do very simply, like all trees, they connect words with lines and with some glue in between. And the real um, difference with Dupont is the glue they use between the words are mathematical symbols. So for example, let's have a look here at a very classic one, profit. Profit equals revenue minus costs. Revenues are volume times price, and costs are fixed costs plus variable costs. Okay, very simple. All of you are really familiar with that. Um, um, imagine if instead of putting profit at the top, I put I don't know staff costs, or audience few, uh, audience figures, or um, product portfolio, or effectively any issue that you're trying to either maximize or minimize any quantitative issue. And the real benefit of DuPont is to help you tease out the structure of a quantitative problem where there is a metric at the top that you're really looking to improve. Okay, um, if we go back to the, the example here, profit, revenues, cost, volumes, price, etc. You're all familiar with that. Once you've looked at it a few times, this one or an alternative one, it really gives you insights that come way earlier than in fact finding. For example, here, imagine a company whose costs are entirely variable. Okay? That company only cares about one of the two drivers of revenues. Which one is that? If your costs are entirely variable, the only driver of revenues you care about is price. Well done for those of you who picked it. Why? Well, because if your costs are entirely variable, then you have zero fixed costs, which means if you don't sell anything, you don't lose anything. However, the moment you sell one item, you incur variable costs, and therefore the price at which you sell that, that, out, that item is really essential to you. So variable costs moves together with price. Um, if I flip the question and ask you, imagine a company whose costs are entirely fixed, which of the two revenue drivers does it only care about? And here it's quite obvious. If your costs are entirely fixed, the only revenue driver you care about is volume. Why? Because um, if your costs are, f if all your costs are fixed, it means you have zero variable costs, which means every time you sell one more item, you incur no variable costs. At which point, since the cost is zero, you're very happy to sell it uh, for you know one cent or one penny because it contributes to profit. So the only thing you care about is volume. So fixed cost and volume move together and price and variable costs move together. Um, you know, at one extreme, for example, if you think about a company whose costs aren't any things think about, fixed, think about uh, software. Um, once, you know, software or pharmace pharmaceuticals is a bit excessive, but software, the, fix the first version of the software costs you a lot. The second version of the software has a marginal cost, a variable cost that's very, uh, that's close to zero. And therefore, in a software, what you try and achieve is as much volume as possible. Um, at the other end, what are some of the industries in which you know, costs are entirely variable? Uh, well, you kind of, why don't I hear from you? you know, just feel free to comment on the course and come up with a couple of industries like that. Now, so with uh, DuPont, it helps you clarify very early a range of possible um, options. Now, if I ask you, for example, how do I increase the profit of GAP? Uh, those of you who've watched the Key Thinking Technique um, course will know that we've done this exercise before. And when I ask it live, people come up with lots of answers. Can you see that if instead of having a big brainstorm about 20 ideas, you create a quick DuPont and you go profit equals revenue minus cost, revenues is volume times price, etc., etc., then how do you come up with four ideas to improve profits? Increase volume. Play with price, up or down, reduce fixed costs, reduce variable costs. And one of the benefits of DuPont is it's not necessarily great at seeing creative ways to uh, optimize the metric that you're uh, tasked with um, dealing with, but it helps you not forget obvious answers. Okay? Now, um, how do we apply uh, DuPont in practice? Well, let's see a couple of examples. Uh, we're obviously, we're not gonna, well, we're gonna look at one with profit, but we're gonna look at a few others with other types of metrics that you might be asked in your day-to-day -day, uh, jobs to deal with. And then uh, we'll see how you take the metric, you 
structure a tree under it, structure a Dupont under it, under it, and very quickly you can arrive at two, four, eight, sixteen generic solutions to maximize whether it's up or down the particular metric you're uh, in charge of. Let's have a look at Dupont in practice.